Hi, my name is Mark Mays. I am an applications engineer with Outback Power, and here today to talk to you about our Mojave energy storage system and how well it AC couples with a grid-dependent inverter. One of the biggest challenges with AC coupling is battery voltage regulation. That's the biggest challenge, especially under low load conditions, no load conditions, and a full battery. That can be very challenging. So I'm here to show you what we can do. So let's take a look at the setup. We have an 8,000 watt Mojave inverter, and there's also an 11.8 kilowatt hour lithium storage system as part of the total energy storage system. <clears throat> that is tied into this uh, panel with the Mojave's output. That is AC coupled to an SMA 8,000 watt inverter that is being uh, fed with a 7,000 watt solar array. So the output of the SMA and the output of the Mojave are both tied together via this load panel. You can see, uh, we'll be looking at some of these measurements. We have, uh, we're gonna be measuring a couple of loads. We have two 1500 watt heaters. We also have a 2000 watt heater for a total of about 5,000 watts of load. We're gonna be monitoring those loads using a scope meter in meter mode and the top reading here is the 240 volt uh, voltage. Then we have the 240 volt load current. And then these two bottom readings are each of the individual uh, heater load currents. So let's get to it. And then we have the Mojave user interface here. It's showing the current battery voltage. There's going to be arrows that we'll see later that will show battery charging and discharging. And this is the power flow to the load. And this is what is coming from the utility. Right now we have 5,000 watts total. And that's 1,800 watts coming from the utility and the remaining 3,200 watts coming from the array for a total of 5,000 watts for all three loads. Now let's observe some of the export functionality. Now what I'm gonna do is eliminate most of the load. So I'm gonna turn off the 240 volt heater and then turn off one. And then both heaters, right now we have about 1600 watts of the 3200 going out to the grid. The other uh, 1600 watts or so is going to the other heater. Now I'm gonna turn that heater off all the way. And you can see that the entire uh, 3000, 3200 watts approximately is now going out to the grid. So what, this is what, is what would be happening normally during the day when the sun is shining. It's exporting whatever power it has from the SMA Sunny Boyd while we stay in pass-through minus any power that's being consumed by the loads. Now I'm going to turn these loads back on. You can see that the load current for the 240 volt load and both heaters have come back on looking at the scope meter display. Now I'm going to go to the action menu and I'm going to drop the grid and apply that. I just heard the transfer relay click on the Mojave. Uh, going to close the screen and now you can see that there's about a thousand watts uh, that was coming from the grid or about 1500 actually, uh, that is now coming from the battery. So we're still connected. The loads are still uh, connected and transferring uh, very smoothly from grid to the battery. And we can see what happens when we reduce some of that load. So first I'm going to discharge the battery a little bit. So I'm going to turn off the PV array and when I do that, you can see that the entire uh, 5,000 watt load is now gonna come from the battery. I'm doing this just so we can get the battery discharged to at least 85% SOC. This will initiate a new bulk charge. We have now reached our target state of charge, so we're going to go ahead and turn the PV array back on. 
and we can see that the SMA has come on and started to take on some of that load and the battery is discharged down below 85%. We see that it's done in a slow control manner. There's no slamming of the current or power from one direction to another. Uh, right now I'm going to reduce some of the load so we can get some charging current onto the battery. Now you can see we're getting about 1200 watts of charging current onto the battery. <clears throat> now we're going to uh, see what happens when we reduce the load even more. So now we have no load and all of the energy coming from the array, about 2800 watts, uh, going on to take on the battery charging. Right now we're getting about 2,700 watts of charging power into the battery and you can see that the SOC and the battery voltage are both going up. Now we're at 99% SOC, the battery is almost fully charged and when we hit 100% SOC, the charging will stop and we will start to frequency watt the SMA inverter curtailing its power output. Now you can see we have hit 100% SOC and you can see on the power flow diagram uh, on the load side underneath that the frequency is changing and the uh, voltage is being regulated uh, pretty tightly and this is with uh, a full battery and very minimal amount of load. Not all grid hybrid battery-based inverters are good at regulating charging voltage and current to the battery bank while AC coupled off-grid. The Mojave inverter provides superior battery charging protection that extends battery life thanks to its high-performing power regulation method using advanced frequency watt control from an AC coupled source. In addition to voltage and current regulation, Mojave can honor all charging stages such as bulk, absorb, and yes, even float if the battery requires it. On top of everything, Mojave will know the charge current once the battery has been determined to be full by either timers, return amps, and or when SOC has been reached. To learn more about the Mojave platform, visit www.outbackpower.com Mojave. All right, thank you for watching.